now that I have a go-to-market model and I've kind of internalized how I'm going to market with my product, what are the steps to build, actually building out a sales organization? Like, who do I hire? When do I hire that person? What are some of the approaches to going from small to large? The first part of building out a sales organization is understanding the sales learning curve. It takes time for an organization to understand how to sell its product. Just like it takes time to build a product, it takes time to understand how a customer buys and the productivity of a sales person and the overall organization, and that's what the sales learning curve depicts. On this axis is the yield, and over here is time, and the sales learning curve looks like this. And it's divided into three phases. This is called the initiation phase, this is called the transition phase, and this is called the execution phase. And every company wants to try to get to the execution phase as quickly as possible. This is when we have what's called a repeatable sales model. A repeatable sales model means that I can hire a salesperson, hire another salesperson, hire another, hire another, and I will know exactly the yield of that salesperson on a repeatable basis. So if I hire a person and it costs $200,000 a year, I'll know how quickly that person can ramp and how much money that salesperson will bring into the organization. In the initiation phase, I don't know any of that. We don't know how long it takes a salesperson to ramp. We don't know how much money a salesperson can bring into the company. We don't even know if our product can be sold. So how do we think about now hiring for these different phases? Because they're very different in terms of in the life cycle of a company, the type of salesperson that one brings in is actually very, very different. So we think about the initiation phase as hiring what I would call a renaissance rep. The person probably is technical, they're used to being really a one-person band. There's probably no sales engineer, there's no marketing department, there's really nothing. And so we have to think about this person as kind of a lone wolf out there trying to drum up business for the organization. You're not gonna find the Renaissance rep coming out of a large organization. How do I know when I'm not in the initiation phase anymore and I'm in the transition phase or in the execution phase? Let's say you have two to three salespeople who are Renaissance people. I will move from this phase to this phase when the two to three salespeople on average, generate one times their fully loaded cost. When a salesperson can generate the same amount of money that they are costing, we move from this phase to the transition phase. And we get into execution phase when this is three times the loaded cost. And why 3x? Well, a salesperson and sales organization not only has to cover their own costs, but a sales organization has to cover the revenue for the entire organization. Now, a very productive company is probably 5x the cost of, and this is a fully loaded, so when we think about quotas and we think about commission rates, typically you want to be anywhere from 3 to 5x in this phase here. And only when you get there are you able to think about a repeatable sales model. Here's where I can start to get the people who have been at larger organizations. Once you have the marketing support, the sales engineering support, and all of the underlying pieces that these folks are familiar with, then we can start bringing in people which are more, I would say, coin-operated. And in the same way that you wouldn't hire a coin-operated salesperson to be in this phase, I probably wouldn't hire a startup person to be in this phase because that person is gonna say, boy, this sales organization is too bureaucratic for me. There's too many rules. I can only sell in one zip code. Why not? Well, those enterprise reps have all the marketing support, have all the sales engineering support, have dedicated territories. People coming out of large environments are very used to having a lot of resources at their disposal. 
those people will not work well here. Even if they have crushed their number at the previous organization, it's a mismatch for where you are and skills of that particular person. And so the constraints over here, which actually is the definition of sale of, of repeatable sales process, probably doesn't work for the person here. So when you're hiring, think about where you are in this process and think about how I might go apply those exact resources to where I am in terms of my company's life cycle. You as CEO, kind of working with the salespeople in this phase, will give you an appreciation for what salespeople face. It'll give you appreciation what the customer's saying. It will also give you enough knowledge to go hire a VP of sales in this particular phase because you'll understand kind of the issues that your sales organization is dealing with. Now, if this is a different type of person, what do I do with all these great people who started out? Like here's a person who risked coming to the company and they're you know, two or three of these core people and they help to build the whole sales organization. So how do I think about using these people? Probably by the time we get here, we're gonna to wanna to open up new geographies, maybe have new products that we're starting to build. These people are phenomenal at going and doing that because these folks know how to do these things without any formal resources. Obviously, we want to try to keep them through the whole cycle because they know a tremendous amount about our company.